Hello interwebs, I hope you're all doing well, and I am currently sitting down here on the floor in front of one of the way too many bookshelves that I have in my apartment, because this is the bookshelf that I like to affectionately call the bookshelf where I put all the books that I'm reading currently for video essays and such. Yeah, that, that rolls off the tongue. Anywho, the reason I'm sitting down here is because for today's video, I just wanted to share a few books that I've read recently over the past few months that I've really, really enjoyed and just wanted to share with all of you. And what's more, I want all of these books that I'm gonna be sharing to be written by transgender writers because quite often, people don't really hear or get recommendations for uh, books written by trans writers. And I'm actually gonna be filming two videos today. The first one, the one that you're watching right now, is going to be uh, fiction books written by trans writers. And then the one that I'm going to be doing uh, next and probably will release next week will be nonfiction books, things like theory and books that kind of inspire me that are uh, for the most part written by transgender writers. So uh, yeah, let's start off this video by just going over some books that I've really enjoyed. And I I'm gonna choose five books for this one and I'm gonna start dark and go happier. So the first book that I'm going to be uh, recommending is the darkest book on the list, and that is Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumfett. This is, uh, first and foremost, a horror novel, but more importantly, it is very unsubtly. In fact, it says it literally in, I think, the first page. Uh, this is a book about fascism, and specifically, fascism against trans people in Britain right now, uh, though sadly a lot of it applies uh, in a lot of different ways to the United States and places around the world, but it is very much centered in Britain. Like quite literally as you read this book, it becomes very, very evident that there is no subtlety going on here at all. This is quite literally about how fascist movements dehumanize, frame things in black and white, and use trauma to sort of create this movement that galvanizes uh, people to dehumanize and hate and, and, and despise people and, and how they sort of fit and every and how people and trans people specifically um, are, are fitting into these systems and how even people who end up hating trans people are ultimately being used by systems like this. Now I say all of that and that seems very heady especially for a fiction book but what I love most about this book uh, is the fact that it feels very viscerally real despite the fact that you can very much tell that this is an allegory. We follow two women in the novel, one uh, cisgender and one transgender, and you discover early in the novel that they have a shared traumatic experience that happened at this very specific haunted house in their past, and it took them on two different paths on their life. The cisgender woman eventually falls into gender-critical feminist spaces, aka turf spaces, and starts to see the world in black and white and allows her to sort of view her complicated feelings on her trauma in ways that are defined in very black and white terms, and that sort of helps her, but ultimately allows her to dehumanize and fall into fascist movements. Whereas our trans woman character is sort of put on the outskirts of society, has to do porn and things like that in order to get by because of how she's seen as a trans woman. And both characters are very well articulated, given a lot of empathy even to people who are very hateful figures. But eventually they have to go back to the house where their trauma happened and it all centers around a very uh, like kind of horror uh, haunted house tale. And I don't want to give away too much more than that because the specific way that this gets told and the perspective from which this book is told is, is very unique and surprising. Um, and it is a very dark novel, very hard novel, one I cannot recommend enough. Staying on the dark path, though, for the next book, and I promise we will get to some lighter stuff in just a second, uh, but I'm going to recommend Manhunt by Gretchen Felker Martin. For some of you, this may be a book that you recognize because I actually did a big video essay about it over on my main channel. You can check out that video, uh, so I won't talk too, too much about this one, but I definitely want to recommend it because this is very much a body horror kind of zombie fiction story. And again, it's another one that is sadly about transgender people and gender critical feminists because sadly that is a... Uh, Big thing for trans people when it comes to things that we are horrified about, and this again is another horror novel. Uh, we find ourselves in a world where uh, testosterone makes people become sort of ravaged zombies. And while we meet a group of characters, our main character is a trans woman who is struggling to survive, is very worried that, you know, she's going to turn into one of these zombies because of her testosterone and sort of has a lot of dysphoria related to the world right now and also her own body. And the book uses the sort of body horror element uh, of of the tale to uh, just talk about like how trans people feel about our bodies and specifically trans women. Though the book has a lot of really great empathy towards trans men uh, as well. And then on top of that, the one of the big enemy groups uh, in the story is a group of 
basically, again, gender critical feminists who kind of go around killing zombies and hunting down trans women and, and again, creating a very fascist society in this world. Again, it is a, it is a great book that understands uh, how, you know, dehumanizing mindsets get created. It is a very much a book about dysphoria and it is a very gross book. Like when I mean like physically gross, there's a lot of descriptions of body and, and fluids and things like that. So if that's not your, your uh, like cup of tea, this is not going to be the book for you. But I really think that this is another uh, really great work in that sort of mode. Moving on from the horror elements, uh, I want to recommend a book that is uh, still about a tough topic, but a, a little bit more fun. And that is this book, Who Hunts the Whale? by Laura Kate Dale and Jane uh, Arith Magnet. Uh, some of you may know Laura Kate Dale because she has her own YouTube channel and she also does stuff with the amazing James Stephanie Sterling. Uh, and if you know James Stephanie Sterling, you know that they talk a lot about video games. Uh, and that's what this book also is too. This is a satirical novel, uh, about a young woman who uh, goes and joins a big video game company, think akin to Activision Blizzard or something like that, it's a fictional uh, company, and basically she starts to see how the very uh, horrible practices of hyper-capitalism that exist within the video game sphere. It's very much a game about like microtransactions, the, the horrible treatment of workers, and the need for unionization, uh, the, the uh, dehumanization that occurs in those spaces. But it is a very over-the-top top heightened uh, version of that story. And, and I have hesitate to even say that it's an over top version because honestly, a lot of the conversations that happen in here that are meant to be like to the 10th degree, I very much am like, that type of conversation probably did happen. Like there's an early conversation in the book about a bunch of like people run a video game company just ranting about how uh, much how much of their bonuses they want to give themselves for the year, whether it's 10 million or 15 million. Um, and while that feels like very satirical, I'm also like, yeah, that, that, that is a conversation that probably happened. So the book is meant to be kind of over the top, but in a lot of ways, it's sadly very realistic. And while it is sort of in that sort of satirical bent, uh, I think a lot of the nuances that it gets into with its sort of heightened uh, discussion, I think are really important and great. Um, I'm actually planning on interviewing Laura Kate Dale and uh, Jane uh, Arith Magnet later on on this channel uh, about this book. So if you wanna learn more about it or you enjoy it, check out that interview, hopefully coming in just a little bit. So moving on to our last books, they're actually going to be comic books because I like like comic books and trans people like comic books, so we're gonna do some comic books. Uh, and the first one is going to be Dead India by Hamish Steele. So uh, full disclaimer on this one, uh, I do know Hamish. Uh, I did an interview with him uh, on my main channel. He is the creator of the Netflix show uh, Dead End Paranormal Park, which itself was based on uh, these uh, graphic novels that he himself wrote. So if you like Dead End Paranormal Park on Netflix, which sucks that it was canceled by the way, uh, I'm very upset at Netflix for that, but it's one of numerous things I've said about Netflix for. But if you like that show, then you will like Dead Endia. It is, uh, it is a slightly different version of the TV show. This is very much kind of a fun adventure romp through a sort of uh, amusement park that our main characters work at that is uh, beset by uh, demons and ghouls and uh, heaven and angels and all those things, but in a very like fun kind of way. It has like an, a horror aesthetic, but it is not a horrifying book. It's just sort of a horror aesthetic. Uh, and it's just a lot of fun. And what is, uh, I think one of the best things about this book is just the beautiful representation that is within it. It's like, it's always fun, but there are just so many different people represented from you know, trans people, uh, people on the autism spectrum, people from different religious backgrounds, and they're all done authentically and I think very uh, intelligently. Uh, so this is just a lot of fun, but, but take my suggestion with a grain of salt because Hamish is a friend of mine. Uh, so I love his work even regardless of me having met him or talked to him, um, but take, take my suggestion with a grain of salt if you will. To wrap out, I, I want to finish on a graphic novel series that I have fallen in love with the past few weeks, and that is Oh Human Star by Blue Deliquanti. I adore, I adore this graphic novel series. Uh, it is three graphic novels, so three books about this size, uh, and it is about a uh, man who helped invent uh, robotics and artificial intelligences, waking up in a future in his in an artificial body, unsure of how he died, and having to uncover the mystery of what happened to him in his death, and he finds that he's in this future where the things that he helped create have now become daily life, like artificial intelligences, robotics have all become part of daily life, 
And even more fun, he meets his old partner that helped him build up his company, um, who has made, who was trying himself to recreate his friend in robotic form, but had continually failed to do so, and had uh, made a uh, version of him that was younger, who actually came out as trans. So there's a trans flying robot character uh, within this story as well. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. There's a really good mystery in here, but it's actually more a story about romance um, and love and finding family. So if you like sci-fi stories about artificial intelligence, robotics, a little bit of mystery, but also with romance and love, um, I, I cannot recommend A Human Star enough. It is such a good story. Legitimately, uh, it, is, it is fantastic. It's a great queer story as well, not just a trans story. Um, so cannot recommend it enough. I, I have fallen in love with A Human Star and actually has informed uh, some things that I'm working on separately. Um, so yeah, check, check this out. Speaking of big projects though, before I wrap out, I just want to let all of you know, uh, this Friday, if you're watching this video when it goes up, uh, I am having a big video that is releasing on my main channel that is about AI and transphobia, so check out that video. But the reason I am promoting that video is because at the end of that video, I have a very big announcement about a project that I am going to be working on outside of YouTube that I'm really pumped about and need your help for. So if you are watching this video when it goes up, uh, please go check out that video. Uh, watch the whole thing i hope you enjoy it but especially the end because there's a big announcement there uh that i'm teasing for all of you but with that being said i hope you all enjoy take care of yourselves and i hope you all my friends live long and prosper